Welcome to Merchants of Dirt Podcast, episode number one. Thank you for joining me for the Merchants of Dirt podcast. This is your insider's guide to practical recreational engineering, where I teach you the art and science of building, promoting, and directing off-road races. I'm your host, professional reckoner and race promoter Kyle Bondo. Coming up in this episode, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to what this podcast is all about, some insight into the meaning behind my tagline, Build Better Races, and we'll get into the three reasons most people get into this business, this off-road racing business, in the first place. I want to begin today's show by telling you a little bit about my company, Reckoneer. I founded Reckoneer in 2012 as a veteran-owned recreational engineering and education company. My main reason for starting Reckoneer was my own frustration and how few resources there are for race promoters to learn the business of off-road racing. That's also become my purpose. Reckoneer is all about teaching race promoters how to build, direct, and operate a successful successful off-road racing business. But what about the name Reckoneer? Reckoneer. Sure is kind of a strange word, right? So I hear that from a lot of friends asking, where did you come up with that name, Kyle. Reckoneer, what the heck does that even mean? Well, the short answer is that I created it from the words recreation and engineer. Think of it the same way uh, Disney creates Imagineers. You know, the guys who design Disneyland rides for Walt Disney, Walt Disney World, and Disneyland. They combine the words imagination and engineer into Imagineer. So Reckoneer is kind of the same way. I kind of took the words recreation and engineer, put them together. And it really started as a joke. So when I was going to George Mason University, I was majoring in applied information technology and sports management, which is a really bizarre thing to major, to double major in. So my best girl joked that I was trying to become some sort of recreational engineer because IT guys just don't go into sports management degrees. So I was very much the oddball in a classroom full of, of sports management people. But at the time, I was convinced that I was going to find a way to create a job that would be something akin to recreational engineering, of combining IT with sports management. And the name Reckoneer stuck. So Reckoneer became its own unique occupation, taking the best parts of event professionals and merging it in, in many ways with the ideas of what, at least what I think sports management should really be about. Now, Reckoneer is more of an occupation than than I would like to admit, and it's kind of become my calling, a calling that to simplify art and science of off-road race promotion, because like it or not, there is a lot of IT going on inside race promotion. And I hope to do to do this, you know, simplifying the art and science of off-road promotion, off-road racing promotion, by providing you with the tools and knowledge to build better races. So with that being said, Each Merchants of Dirt episode will explore how off-road races are built and attempt to simplify the more difficult and confusing aspects of race strategy and direction. I have a ton of topics I want to talk about when it comes to race promotion and the business of off-road racing. And when I say business of off-road racing, I'm talking about the sports management skills needed to promote successful mountain biking, trail running, orienteering, adventure racing, endurance events. And this is by no means an exhaustive list of sports. But this is a, it should give you a good idea of what I mean when I say off-road racing. So it could include all sorts of other things. But this is kind of the, the short list of things that, that uh, I like to focus on. So Merchants of Dirt Podcast will talk about the techniques that work for off-road race and off-road race development that it kind of include those kind of things. I'll also cover the common mistakes that so many race promoters make. And, of course, how you can avoid them when building your own races. Sometimes you might catch me diving into a few related outdoor topics that I love to explore and kind of a little background. You know, I started off road racing when I was a kid, racing BMX bikes. And that led me to all sorts of outdoor related sports. 
you know, growing up in Washington State, you can't help but be a kid running around in the forest. But all this off-road and outdoor works really led me into a career in the military. And during a tour overseas, I had a chance to race mountain bikes in Australia, and that hooked me on mountain biking in particular. So that's why I tend to go down the rabbit hole on mountain biking more than any other off-road sport. And if you had a chance to visit my blog over at Reckoneer.com, you'll find that uh, I do tend to lean towards the mountain biking more than anything else. So it should not be a surprise to you that I love mountain biking. And I'm an active mountain biker. And my favorite part of adventure racing is the mountain biking part. You know, like adventure racing. Wait a minute, you're, you're just talking about mountain biking. You're talking about adventure racing. Yeah, there's all sorts of sports I love. But when it comes to when it comes to off-road racing, I tend to lean towards mountain biking. But uh, this is not a mountain biking or mountain bike racing podcast. This is a podcast about off-road race education. And I try to make each of my articles from record.com relevant to a broad range of off-road, uh, off-road sports. And Merchants of Dirt is no different. This will be a podcast dedicated to race promoters who are actively working in off-road racing. So it should apply, 90% of my strategy should apply to anybody in the off-road sports. So strategies, tips, tactics, all those should apply to you. But you may notice the mountain biking slant so many in some of my articles and some of my podcasts. And that's kind of the reason why. It could also explain my interest in things like dual slalom and enduro. However, I've raced, built, and managed just about every kind of off-road sport there is. And I want to appeal to your favorite off-road sport. sport. So if you would like to spend some time, or you would like to start you, if you would like me to spend some time addressing your favorite off-road sport, please reach out to me. Reach out to me. Uh, I'm at Reckoneering, that's with the I-N-G at the end, on Twitter. So, and if you do reach out to me, I will certainly see about giving your sport some love. However, you'll find most of my focus to be on the business side of off-road racing as well. My hope is to make Merchants of Dirt a series of conversations intended to help you understand the mechanics of strategies behind building better races, not just the mechanics themselves of, of race promotion, race direction. But some of the business side of that stuff, and that team seems to be where a lot of people get caught up when it comes to racing, is they don't focus on the business side, they focus on the mechanics. So Merchants of Dirt will focus on both of those. Some of you might want to know what I mean when I say build better races. Well, after racing and working in the off-road racing industry for over 20 years, I have learned three things. And here's what they are. Number one. I have met few race promoters that have built their races year after year the same way twice. Number two, I have met numerous people who want to get into off-road racing, racing and off-road race promotion, but don't know where to start. This is a big one. And number three, I have met too many race promoters that have gone out of business because they didn't know how to make their race or their race business work. And that's, that's a tragedy. So why is that simply put? Why what are these three things? The three things that I that I that I've learned? Well, simply put, there's no school for off-road race promotion. No one is taught how to work in this industry but anything that resembles structure. I mean, most come to this this business thinking is that that this thought that they'll learn as they go. I mean, maybe you've caught yourself saying something like, oh, it doesn't matter, uh, it doesn't seem that hard, I'll figure it out as I, as I do it, only to find out how much of your life your first race really consumes. I mean, there is no lesson plan to tell you when you need to be working on your race, and no one will tell you when it's a good idea to go home. I mean, planning a race takes time. Exploring miles of acreage, often in remote locations, takes time. Building proposals and applying for permits takes time. And because most events take place on the weekends, you'll often find yourself doing most of the time-consuming work alone. There is no teacher to explain to you that a race promoter's job description makes you the manager, the marketer, and the manual labor all in one. 
No one's going to do that. All orchestration of communications, planning, milestones, deadlines, and schedules, it all starts with you. It's all managed by you. It's all closed out by you. And surprise, you will often do this with no pay. And when it comes to that alone part, you can only delegate your work when there's someone to delegate that work to. So chances are, you're not going to have a staff. You won't be able to pay them. It's going to be volunteers. It's going to be friends. It's going to be family. And they're going to be working with no pay as well. I mean, there is no test or quizzes that prepares you for the ambiguity of all this. You know, the not knowing. I mean, who will explain to you that there will come a time, many, many times, that you will not have an answer? And you'll be forced to change your plans because you just don't know. Or you get the plans changed for you by something you cannot control. I mean, who will repair, prepare you for these limitations, these restrictions, the cancellations that you will definitely face? Who will teach you about Mr. Murphy and his law firm, Murphy, Murphy, and Murphy? And uh, you'll probably, as you listen to this podcast, hear me talk about Mr. Murphy a lot. Because Mr. Murphy and I, we have, he's kind of my co-host, Mr. Murphy. But he's always out to get you with an arsenal of gotchas and pitfalls designed to ruin every one of your races. So who's going to teach you about Mr. Murphy and these gotchas? And if you survive all that discouragement, all that not knowing what you don't know, there's still no guarantee that anyone will show up to your race. I mean, how will you keep motivated after you put a huge amount of time into making your first race only to have 30 people show up? The answer, my friends, is me. That's who. I'm the only one. Now, I don't mean to toot my own horn about this, but if you start looking out on the on the, the interwebs, you know, the intertubes, there is not a whole lot of this education out there. There is not a whole lot of people who want to dive into this topic. Why? Because this stuff's hard. Strategy is not easy. Business development is not easy. And off-road race promotion is a very unique opportunity. But I want to help you be successful at this. I've seen too many of my friends fail at race promotion to, to let it continue. And you know I've had some failures myself. I'm not 100% awesome at this. But I have learned what not to do. And I'm here to tell you the things you should not do and the things you should do. And then I'll tell you my opinion. So I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what I don't know. I'll tell you my opinion. You know, and that's kind of my that's kind of my deal with you as a listener. Is that's why I started Reckoner, and that's why I'm doing the Merchants of Dirt podcast. And I hope to do this, you know, for several dozens of episodes. But I'm here to help you. Whether you're new or whether you're a veteran. And not just survive this business, but I want to see you succeed and thrive. And that's my goal for you. Okay, that's enough introduction to why I'm doing the Emergence of Dirt podcast. Let's get into today's topic. And that is the three reasons most people get into the business of off-road racing. And this is kind of an interesting interesting kind of take on why you might be in this business, business. And let's see if you fit into one of these categories. Chances are you probably will. But let's see which one you identify for more. So kind of going backwards, we'll start with, with reason number three. And reason number three that, that someone might get into off-road racing is, of course, to make some money. Now, you might be saying, make some money. That sounds pretty, pretty straightforward. I mean, why do most people go in business is to make some money. But with off-road racing... There's an interesting, uh, there's an interesting fact that you should know about this. So if you're kind of in thinking about off-road racing or in off-road racing and wanting to know kind of how much money kind of in this business, in this industry, let's, let's start with the understanding that there is this steady rise in America of people needing to go outside. And I don't know if, if it's just the, the need to to connect with nature again, but outdoor experiences have become a very important part of American culture. I mean, whether it's this lack of connection with our interpersonal lives, you know, the, the need for 
this uh, the social environment, people are stuck in their phones, this resulting emptiness in our collective lives that is causing this, this trend to take place. But the result is very measurable because the revival of the outdoor recreational you know, and, you know, industry, in, especially in personal health and you know, active communities, things like that, has a dollar amount attached to it that you can say, hey, you can point to and say, hey, there are people spending money doing outdoor recreation that were not spending money before. So, I mean, what do we mean by that, Kyle? Well, according to the Outdoor Industry Association, this is outdoorindustry.org, and I'll, I'll put that link in the show notes, their, 12, 12, uh, their uh, 2015 Outdoor Recreation Economy Report said that Americans spent... Now, get this, $645 billion on outdoor recreation. Now, let me say that again. It's kind of worth saying. It's $645 billion. That's a billion with a B. And this spending included billions in off-road events, trips, travel, gear. I mean, this data shows the potential of off-road event market. And this makes off-road events a very real opportunity for tapping into this robust outdoor recreation market. There is money here. So if your reason to get an off and racing is to make some money, the potential is there. Now, don't be fooled. You have to do this correctly in order to tap into that money. But there is money to be made in off-road racing. In particular, the outdoor recreational market is telling us that people are interested in spending money in that arena. So matter of tapping into it, but with 645 billion reasons to tap into it, it is definitely a motivation to get into this industry. So what's the second reason? So the second reason I often hear about why people get into the off-road racing is they want to be their own boss. I want to be my own boss. I mean, you want to be that person who owns their own business, and you want that business to be race promotion. I mean, you want to be your own boss in the way that you want to run races your way. I mean, be that independent race promoter. And you're most likely lured into this industry after experiencing too many bad races. And this is kind of how I got started into off-road race promotion, is going to a race that was just awful. In, uh, In one instance... It was a race with, all of our registration was one pop-up tent with uh, a young lady sitting Indian style on the dirt, writing in registration on the back of a used form. And everything was cash. That was it. And bib numbers, well, you know, they were going to show up eventually. That's a horrible race. That's a horrible race experience. So when you get lured into this industry based off of a really bad experience, Often, it kind of guides your desire to make it better. So, and the data shows that there's over 30,000 race promoters in the United States. And over 80% of those are race promoters that once or still are racers themselves. So, chances are, being your own boss, is that you're one of those four out of five, for those keeping score at home, that are coming off of some sort of racing experience and said, you know, enough is enough. Yeah, we need to do this ourselves, or I need to do this myself. So as a trail junkie, there's a pretty good chance that you're looking to create an off-road race that you've kind of always dreamed of promoting. I mean, maybe you're that guy that maybe it's not really a bad experience. Maybe you just want a better experience. Maybe you just want to, maybe it's a, a piece of trail that, or a park that no one's ever raced in because no promoter will touch it for some silly reason. You decide, you know, I really like to race there. I mean, chances are a lot of the, the mythologies around race promoters won't touch X is usually that. It's mythology. So it's just people that haven't tried. And there's tons of places out there that people just haven't tried making a race at. These are complexities. Uh, there's local government involved. Park management is difficult, et cetera, et cetera. But building that dream, that dream race may be a good reason to start this and go down your own road. So... I mean, bringing the off-road racing community to your event in droves is a, is a big, big factor. But making better events 
events that you know you can make better events is a great reason to start a company. Because if you can make better events, better than the other guys, then people will start coming to your stuff rather than their stuff. And that's just that's just a fact of the market. Is There are plenty of races I've gone out there. But if I've got a toss-up, I'm going to take the one I know I'm going to get better better experience out of. So, okay, those are the first two reasons. You know, make some money, be your own boss. What's what's another main reason? So reason number one, and this is a big reason for me, is race promotion allows you to do something that few other jobs allow you to do. And that's make a difference. I mean, this is an important reason for creating that the positive influence in your community. And it may sound a little bit squishy, but despite the challenges that kind of lie in your path, if you do this right, you can really make a difference in people's lives. So people are like, well, make a difference? What are you talking about? You know, a bunch of people can come out and ride bikes, a bunch of people can come run. How is that going to make a difference in someone's life? Well, don't think of it as the people who you see in the gym every day, you know, those those gazelles, those super strong, super fast, everything comes easy to them. Don't think of that. Think of it is that your race, your event can directly impact a person that may not be a racer or may not be a racer yet. Okay, so you're th- looking, think of the person who is sitting on that couch eating, eating chips, watching the game, and realizing that, man, I really got to lose this weight. I really need to start moving around. I need to really start getting involved in something, something a little more than, than themselves. Okay, and they, and they decide that today's the day. Today's the day they decide, you know, screw it. I'm done. I'm done sitting on the couch. It's time for me to, to live a bit, live a bit. Time to get on my life. And they pick themselves off the couch and they start to train in anticipation for your event. And they want to come meet like-minded people and they want to come, they want to come, you know, there's a community element of your race. But they're not the kind of people that are going to come to win your race. I mean, this is like one entry. They could come in dead last. I mean, you could be, be picking up your race. Hopefully you're not. But you can be picking up your race long before you ever see this person cross the finish line. But they showed up to your race. They raced your race. And they crossed that finish line. And that change in that person's life could be epic. And it takes bringing your event into existence before that capability exists to touch a real, you know, touch a real person. And this actually can happen and I've seen this happen because without you they might not have found that moment to say you know what I, I need to do something different but with you I mean your creation I mean think about it, is is building races is kind of a is almost like I, I call it the art and science for a reason there's a little art to this but with you your creation you could be that force that gives them the new outlook on life they needed it may be somewhat intangible you know, in some ways, this may be spiritual. But I see event creation as a tool for promoting positive mental, mental health. And if you can change just one life for the better, isn't that worth the struggle? I think the whole reason behind race promotion of making money is great. Because making a living is great. Uh, you know, being your own boss is great. But changing a life, changing a life is awesome and now you know so that's it for this episode of the merchants of dirt podcast now if you learned something from all this and you want to learn more i have a few things i want you to do right now first go to reckoner.com slash join and drop your email in the box that way i can tell you when new episodes are coming out or when i've got some new posts coming out on my blog second i want to hear back from you about this episode Did you learn something useful? Is there something I can do better? And is there a topic about race promotion you would really like me to cover? If any of those are true for you, I'm on Twitter at Reckoneering and let me know what you would like to hear in a future episode. Now, third and most important, 
If you like this episode, I would love for you to go to the Merchant Earth Podcast on iTunes and give me a quick review and a five-star rating. Thank you for listening to the Merchants of Dirt podcast. I'm the Reckoneer, Kyle Bondo, hoping that you take what you learned today and go weave idle into epic.